A campaign coming to a close is, in nearly every scenario, a big deal. Think about it this way. Even if the campaign was coming to a close and it was only five sessions long, how much time would that entail? Let's say you were running pretty short sessions. Two, maybe three hours. That's five sessions of two and a half hours, equaling a total of 12.5 hours, or roughly half a day. Now, personally, I find those statistics pretty majorly conservative because based off of personal experience, sessions are usually way longer than two or three hours, and a campaign is typically much more than five sessions. But even with those very conservative numbers, that is still one hour longer than the entire length of the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended edition. The Lord of the Rings trilogy, which has to this day been deemed one of the greatest epic stories ever put to film, and your incredibly short campaign still managed to clock in a single hour longer than that. So I repeat, your campaign coming to a close, regardless of the length of it, is in fact a big deal. And it deserves to be treated with the gravitas and momentous occasion that it is. So why is it so difficult to do so? The truth is, closing a campaign is never easy. I mean, aside from the emotional implications of doing so, at the end of the day, trying to wrap up a story like that, one that has had so much impact, so much time put into it, I mean, it's a lot of pressure. Any creative knows that once you've worked on something for a long time, ending it properly is important. It is the last thing people remember. It's the last interaction people have with it. You're going to want your party to feel like it's worth it, like it's good, like the story came to a close and they will forever remember it. Not only that, it's a lot of pressure on everybody's shoulders. I mean, it's not just you who wants it to feel that way. All the players do, and they want to make sure that their actions do so as well. They want to make sure that everything that they do is memorable. There's just so much pressure to finish your story properly. And honestly, not only that, all the players are stressed about being able to experience everything with these characters they wanted to in the first place. Have they had a moment that they really haven't been able to experience yet? Have they managed to finish the fantasy of their character? There's so much riding on a final session and it can really cause a lot of stress. So bringing it to a close is far more than a simple task. And I would know I am preparing to end a many year campaign very soon. And with that, there's a lot of pressure on my shoulders as well. I've thought a lot about what's important, about how to bring this all to a satisfying end. And while I'm far from perfect, I certainly have some ideas. So let's talk about them. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the first things you really need to keep in mind is character fantasies. When people make characters, they typically have an idea. If they're anything like me, they have a very specific idea of what they'd like this character to be able to do. When they craft the mechanics, when they look at their build, when they make their backstory, they really want that one moment. Did you build your character to be this sorcerer of the storm, controlling the very world and skies itself? Well, if you never get that chance to look down and cast Meteor Swarm as you cause a massive storm to flow through, it might be a little bit disappointing. Maybe you're a warrior and you've always wanted that moment of being able to face down five people versus one. You've built your whole character to be able to do that, but that moment has not yet come. Making sure that your character's fantasies are fulfilled are incredibly important concepts. It is why many people play the game. And honestly, if you did not in the first session when people made these characters ask them what their fantasies were, I would really consider doing so in the future because it is very important. You want to know why they built these characters, what you want them to be able to do, and to give them the chance to be the badass heroes. Truthfully, this is something I lack a lot. I'm not very good at letting my players be badass. I always want to present them with a challenge to make them feel like they got through things by the skin of their teeth. But by doing that, I don't ever let them feel like they're powerful. Honestly, I have another DM who's really good at that and I'm about to pass things off to him. So I know that what I'm facing against is they're going to compare me to him doing that in the next campaign. And that pressure is a little bit on my shoulders. Daniel, if you're watching this video, enjoy your compliments there because it's the last you're going to get from me. Point is, there's a lot that goes into character fantasies and making sure that they're fulfilled is something that is very important. But that's not the only thing you have to consider when ending a campaign. The other thing is, what is the campaign theme? A campaign theme might seem a little bit vague, like maybe you made a pirate campaign. Okay, so the campaign is about pirates. Or maybe you made a campaign about a bunch of warriors fighting in a war. Okay, so the campaign theme is about war. But there's more than that. I've always found through every campaign I've ever run and played in that at the end of the campaign, there's a question, a single question that must be answered by the final conflict. And this question is something that does not come from the DM, but instead the whole table. When you consider all of the backstories of everybody involved, all of the adventures that you've gone through, when you consider the final conflict and everything that the BBEG stands for, there's almost 
always a single question hanging in the air. It's not, can we beat the BBEG? It's what is the moral conflict that must be overcome. I played in a campaign once where the entire campaign revolved around the gods messing up. They didn't do their jobs properly. And the final end bad guy was a god attempting to come in and remove all others to be the most powerful. The end question of the campaign was, who's allowed to have as much power as the gods? And at the end of the entire encounter, when we finally beat him and we were able to restore order, each of our characters was granted a wish by the gods themselves as thanks for saving the world. And we each used our wish to answer that question. Who should be allowed to have that much power? No one. My character wished to be a god above gods, the most powerful. However, they were required to do one thing. They would always have to listen to the true will of all mortals, a democracy. They might be most powerful, but they still had to answer what everybody else below believed, a constant cycle of accountability. And each other character's wish was also along this line. And therefore the question was answered. So you must ask yourself, what is the question that is in your current campaign? And how does the final battle, how does the final encounter against the BBEG answer this question? And should it be answered? That is one of the hardest things I've found about ending a campaign, but truly the most rewarding. If you feel like you haven't answered it by the end of the campaign, I think maybe you've missed something because I think this is just good storytelling. Outside of TTRPGs, no matter what story you're telling, I truly think a question should always be answered by the end of a story. So that leads to the next point, which is, does the BBEG fill both of the roles necessary? Will the final encounter with the BBEG allow the character fantasies to come to their full fruition? And will they force that question to be answered? And if not personally, and this is a personal opinion, I wanna make this clear, maybe you should reevaluate. Maybe you should figure out how they do. And I'll be honest, I'm not just saying that from a high mighty horse. I've been thinking about that for weeks now. It's something I've been evaluating and still have not fully come to an answer to. But I truly believe that this is how you make a campaign's end feel satisfying. You also gotta ask yourself, will the characters feel victorious once they beat the BBEG? In today's literature and media, it's really easy to create bad guys that you feel should be redeemable. And I'm honestly one of the worst at this. I always want my bad guys to feel redeemable because I like the idea that everybody's a complex character. But one of the problems with this, if you don't do it carefully, is when the heroes end up beating the bad guy, do they feel like they won? Or do they feel like maybe they just caused issues? Do they feel like they actually came out on top as the side of good? Yes, in the real world, there's rarely a true, generic, obvious good and evil. But and stories, aren't we playing to be on the side of good? Aren't we playing to feel like the heroes? So shouldn't we allow our party to have that as well? One thing that I've done in the past, and my players don't know it, but I'm gonna do it tonight too, is I would buy special sets of dice for momentous moments in the campaign. And by the end of the session, when the moment was ended, I would have been using those dice for the whole night, and then I would allow them to choose who gets which piece of the dice. Which dice goes to whom? And the d20 always goes to the person everybody felt deserved it most that night. And that way we always had a piece of the campaign in those moments. I would say check out only crits and the reason why is because you can get like a gemstone dice or something that's like meaningful. And like if you're gonna spend a little bit of money on dice, I would do it and do it for a campaign that you've spent a ton of time on and you can even get joint dice with all of your uh, people because sometimes too D&D &D is like the only place that you get to see people that are in your life for that period of time and you lose friendships after like unfortunately losing the game because sometimes you can only make time for that one thing and you lose a lot of friendships when you can't make that time anymore and so like you have those dice there to remember them by and why not do it through only crits and support Jane. Yeah I don't think I can find a better tie into that. Honestly, only crits makes really good dice that I've done. I've gotten dice from them for those moments a lot. So anyways, weird way to add this with an emotional ad read. But then the last question I have in my head is what I find most important and the most terrifying. How have we changed? As I discussed earlier, even assuming a campaign of five sessions with two or three hours per session, 
that's a decent amount of time. And a lot of groups don't get to play regularly. They might play bi-weekly, and if you were to assume that, then that five sessions gets played over the course of 10 weeks. I mean, that's a little more than two months of time, which, well, not the most massive amount of time in the world, it's certainly not insignificant. And when you begin to assume longer campaigns, such as the one I'm currently running, which is stretched over the course of years, there's a lot of time for us as players and people to change. And asking how we've changed, not in the game, but over the course of our lives, I find to be the most important question because it leads to asking, what does this game mean to us? Why does it mean to us? What have we gone through over the course of this time? In my current campaign, we've gone through deaths. We've gone through literal plague. We've gone through war. We are not the same people as when we started. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but boy, is it a big thing. Boy, is it something to pay attention to. And asking yourself that question and looking at the story, the real ultimate question you should ask yourself when ending a campaign is, at the end of this all, are we going to look back at it and be glad that we did it? I don't think there's a more important question than that. Yeah, I know that I will be glad that I came to the end of this one, and I can't wait to start the next one, but each one is like a chapter in our lives, and it's important to give it that importance and allow it to feel like it was meaningful. Because there's nothing in my eyes more meaningful than a story told with those you care about. It's hard, it's difficult to let something go, but by letting it go, you now have a memory you can never leave. You get to have a precious treasured memory. That sounds pretty great to me. So here we are at the end of this near five year journey for us and near three year journey with all of you and I just wanna appreciate having honestly like some of the best friends and players I've ever hoped for to come along on this journey, just trust me enough to build this with you and to give back so much more than I could ever hope. Thank you. Thank you. Best you know about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys, you guys make it all easy and worth it. Well, fuck. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yay. And I love you guys. Each and every one of you out there have come with us on this journey, new, old, for just a bit or the entire length, some of you multiple times. Thank you for joining in on whatever this weird, little, magical, curious experience has and will continue to be. <laughs> just promise me you'll be good. <laughs> we'll be back. Yeah, we'll, we'll be, be back. back. You might look a little different. But still <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man. That was really pretty. Awesome. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. That was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. Love you. Love you. Love, love, you. Love, 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 love. Have a wonderful night. Rest well. And <sighs> it's <a> Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> This story comes to a close tonight. But the tale of the Mighty Nine lives on. And who knows? Maybe we'll have the chance to see some of them again. In some shape or form. I love you guys so much. Story, Matt. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, like, comment, subscribe. This is going to be a weird one to edit for yeah. sure. Well, shout out to Eric too from Only Cuts. He's shout out to Eric. He's great. He actually, he's on socials. You can look him up on YouTube and TikTok. He's real big on TikTok. He's been getting real big. Makes some real good content. So, all right. See ya.